Welcome back to another video and today I'm answering one of the most common questions I get about golf clubs and components and that is what is counterbalancing and to make it really simple and to break it down for you all that means is with a golf shaft is the fact that the balance point which is literally where it will balance without a grip on it on a fulcrum and for a higher balance point golf shaft what that means is the fact that the balance point moves higher. So what does that mean from a design perspective? Well, when it comes to graphite, a lot of times what that means is removing mass from the tip section or removing layers of composite and putting it in the butt section. What that can also mean is not actually changing anything down here at all and using different fibers or different materials in the butt end of the golf shaft to put and add weight underneath the hands. This can mean using tungsten or nickel or some type of metal fiber underneath to put more mass there and shift that balance point higher in the club. Now it's a lot more difficult in steel, it does happen, but it's a lot harder because steel is a homogeneous material. You can only do so much with it and if you start to reduce wall thickness towards the tip or anywhere in the golf shaft, you can actually start to really weaken the golf shaft and cause a uh, high level of breakage and you don't want to do that which is why when we talk about counterbalancing it mostly takes from just a um, component perspective mostly takes place in graphite now why do they do this why would you need a counterbalance shaft in your driver or fairy woods or anything like that well it's really quite simple it has to do with modern driver head design because we all want more forgiveness in our drivers well, one of the easiest ways to build forgiveness into a golf club is to make it weigh more. Because like anything else, MOI is a measurement of the difficulty uh, to move something or difficult to rotate. And you know, one of the ways to make it more difficult is to add mass. So when we think about you know, adding mass to a club head, well, that also is going to make it feel a lot heavier, which in some cases, a lot of people want that, but in other cases, it can make it more difficult to swing the golf club. So to counteract that, you can build a golf shaft or build a club with a shaft that has a higher balance point to help counteract that feeling of heaviness in your hands and also makes it easier to control. This is an old analogy, but I love using it. If you think about a broom, right? You've got the bristly end and you've got the handle end. Well, if you're holding it right at the handle end and the bristly end is moving around, it's more difficult to move, right? Because all the weight is on one end. Now, if you rotate it and you hold the bristly end and you hold the handle out, now it's really easy to move around quickly and control. Now, you haven't changed the mass properties of the broom, you've just moved the mass closer to yourself. And in a way, that's effectively what you're doing when it comes to building a driver or a longer golf club and counterbalancing it. A uh, good example, and one of the things you'll see right off the rack would be the Ping G410 Plus. The Alta shaft that comes in it is a higher balance point counterbalance golf shaft. And the reason for that is that driver head is one of the heaviest on the market, which also makes it one of the most stable and forgiving for any golfer. But for some people who struggle with face control and being able to you know, create center contact because they're not able to control the club head as much, a counterbalance shaft makes it a lot easier to swing that golf club. And when you make more, better center contact, the golf ball is going to go further, plain and simple. So that's what counterbalancing does. It puts more mass closer to your hands, can make the golf club a lot easier to control, and allows designers to add more mass to the club head to make them more forgiving, especially when it comes to drivers. So I hope this answers your questions. If you have any questions at all about this or any follow-up, please use the comments section below. And if you have any other club building questions, put them in the comment section. I'm always trying to add to the library to answer questions and help you better understand your golf clubs more and terminology used around club building and club fitting. I'm Ryan Brath, and as always, thanks for watching.